Welcome to Playing With Fire, the podcast for people who are ready to custom build their love. We're talking about non-monogamy, however you design it, as an individuation opportunity. Want to leave the default and make your life spectacularly you? You're in the right place. Hi, everybody. Hello. So we're on video right now, which if you're listening to us, doesn't matter too much to you. But if you want to watch us, not just listen to us, that is a possibility available to you now. This is us. So welcome to Playing With Fire. Playing With Fire. So Ken and I have been doing this podcast thing for, well, we've finished six seasons. We set out to have this be a mm, an ongoing project, a project relationship, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> now, the podcast used to be called Project Relationship, and this episode is really just about what we're transitioning to, why we're transitioning, but more importantly, why you should care and why you're going to want to keep listening. Um, it's not clear to me all the time exactly what it means to have a podcast. But the one thing I know for sure is that my goal is actually to talk to people. Right, yes. To serve you, Mm -hmm. listeners. And what we've been able to do over the last six seasons is create something that seems to be helping people. I get a lot of messages about Things like, hey, you helped us understand how to have a conversation that we'd both been secretly having in our heads. Yeah. <laughs> um, or you helped us figure out how to talk about something that was so sticky and um, we had usually turned into an argument instead of a conversation. Which, yay, that's what we're looking to do. Fantastic. Um, but the, uh, the thing that was most surprising to me time after time after time is we were hearing from people in all sorts of relationship structures, um, polyamorous, monogamous, ethically non-monogamous, um, swingers, and people who were playing with relationship structures. We we're hearing from all of you, but specifically, um, Ken and I had been shifting the podcast to talk about more edgy topics. And edgy, in the current situation that we find ourselves in, in this particular culture, is anything off of the monogamous track. Now, when I hear from people, I hear a lot that the uh, the words we say, the advice we give, the, the things we're talking about, they apply to anybody in any relationship. So I hear from plenty of monogamous folks who are like, this is really helpful. I'm going to listen to your podcast because this is helpful. And, and that's great. And I'm thrilled that you're here. And I have found myself really needing to be clear that my calling is to help people who are transitioning out of default monogamy into the relationship that they really want, even if that takes them out of the context of monogamy. Maybe especially if it takes them out of that context. And the conversations are about are about um yeah what what should what what's good to think about when you're looking at your own relationship and deciding what works, what doesn't work. Do I want to just take what the culture has handed to me and in some ways in, in, like built into the system? Do I want to just participate in that? Or maybe it's not working totally the way I want it to. And maybe I want to do something a little different. What do I do now? And that brings us to playing with fire. So the thing about leaving monogamy, or really being specific here, leaving default monogamy, where you just accept that the the picture of relationship that was presented by the, the media at large, by our culture at large, by our major um, current uh, dominant religious structures, political structures, all of that, that, that particular way of, of being in relationship where two people get together and commit for life from the beginning. And then they generally don't actually pull that off. And frequently there is either divorce, cheating, um, 
or just general malaise and unhappiness, right? So default monogamy is different from somebody who's consciously choosing monogamy. So, which we're very pro. That's all good. Yeah. Um, and hopefully you find yourself in that realm if you're, if you're monogamous, but if you choose to leave monogamy behind, when I chose to leave monogamy behind, I heard from everyone that that never works and you're playing with fire. Yes. Yep. Okay. So let's play with fire. <laughs> Fine. So, and let's make it work. Let's make it work because the thing is playing with fire is exactly how we've gotten so many amazing things, you know? And when I say we, I mean, humans, like as a species, as a, as a oh, creature. Set. That's a really good point. Yeah. <laughs> playing with fire got us fire. Right. <laughs> for so example, like playing with fire got us come in hand. cooked food, uh -huh. uh, which helped us, you know, grow these great big brains that we have. Playing with fire gives us a lot of entertainment. It gives us warmth yeah. in our homes. It gives us fireworks. It gives us campfires. Playing with fire is really normal. Playing with fire is gives the electricity. S'mores. It gives us s'mores. It gives us s'mores. Okay, I don't actually need more. Need than we that. say more? <laughs> um, but it also gives us all the technology. Fire is just yeah. technology, right? And you taught me something about the word technology early in our relationship that has really helped me. Um, you talked about technology in a way I had never heard anybody talk about it. So would you explain why fire is technology? Well, fire is technology the way language is technology. Um, so there's all these people wandering around and we need a way to communicate with each other. We need a way to read each other's minds. So you start making sounds and I'll try to figure out what that means about what you're thinking. It's pretty magic if you think about it. And it yeah, fire, same deal. It's technology. I want to make a thing happen and it's not just happening for me. So I'm going to try to figure out how I can um, encourage the world around me to, to help me get what I'm looking for. Right. So if I have technology, that's what it is. It's rearranging the resources that are sitting there to um, accomplish something. I love this definition because that's exactly what we're doing when we're moving from default relationship to conscious relationship. We're not saying that you just like willy nilly do anything. We're actually saying you intentionally experiment, play with, design, um, talk. You do all these things in an attempt to create a situation that is more in alignment with what right. you want. Right. And that, I, I think that's, it's, it's what's, what's inside of you. What, what do you want? What are you trying? What are you looking for for your, in your relationships? That's the driving, the driving motivator here, not what kind of relationship should I have? Yeah. Well, yeah. just kind of let that one go a little bit and figure out what you're looking for and look for the ways to get that. Now we're talking technology again, right? Rearrange the resources I've got to get to accomplish something. To, to accomplish something. So some I had an email actually just yesterday morning from someone um, who's a, a regular listener. And they said that the thing they're working on right now is showing up authentically. And showing up authentically, they've been working on it for years. But right now, how it seems to be playing out in their relationship is that they they need to have conversations that are really uncomfortable. So they've been showing up authentically in ways that had them say, you know, doing more self-care and they've been, then they've been trying to speak their truth, but now it's time to have some uncomfortable conversations about the things that they want in their relationship. Um, they want a little bit more freedom, a little bit more space. <laughs> um, and it's not, again, not necessarily about sex. This person was actually pretty explicit and they said, it's for me, it's not necessarily about having sex with anyone else. But I do want more freedom to have different friendships um, and to know that my boundaries are set intentionally oh, yeah. by me. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, that's it. That's there what this podcast that's is what about. We, that's what we're about. So yeah, the purpose of playing with fire is to help people find pleasure in their individuation journey by exploring the skills of non-monogamy, whether you're going to employ those in a sexual non-monogamy or not is less relevant to me, but are you employing the skills that we have outlined 
that really help non-monogamy work well in order to become a more you version of you. Yeah. So at root here, we're talking about individuation and non-monogamy. Those two things, well, they're right at the core of my being. So they, they go together. They make sense to me. Individuation is a word that we use to describe what it is when you shed all the parts of you that you've only been picking up and wearing because either you were people pleasing or society was convincing you that you had to be this way, or, you know, you were trying to do something to be liked by a group, or you were trying to fit in all that stuff. That's not authentically you, but you picked up to fit in and it's becoming the most you, you it also requires you to pick up and put on all the stuff that really is authentically you and owning it. And there's a lot of technology uh, <laughs> required to to do all that. It's uh, it's not something that, well, I speak for myself. It's not something, individuation isn't something that I just stood up and said, well, okay, time to start the individuation pro process. Here I go. I mean, I kind of did have that thought, but it's not like that's what happened. <laughs> At that point, I learned all the things that I needed to learn and know, and I'm continuing to learn more things about how I get from where I am to the most me version of me. So there's a lot to, to play with. Yeah. So I found myself on this path. Similarly, I, I did have a moment where I thought, okay, it's time to begin my individuation journey which actually was way after I'd started the process of individuating. Individuating, uh, most of you are probably already participating in it, right? Um, and if you're not, uh, welcome to the party. Let's go. Individuating is about when you start to become who you were meant to be, when you, uh, when you start setting boundaries internally and externally and you set those boundaries and you hold yourself to them, you allow yourself to be mm. ever more who you actually mean to be, even though that will mean by necessity, letting go of things, reinventing things, and really you know, allowing your world to change around you. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, yep. So I, when I say I set off on this journey long before I knew it, <laughs> it's because some of the things that happened were my non-monogamy deeply impacted my individuation journey. Mm -hmm. Right. I had been going along in a life that I thought was fairly conscious and thoughtful for a while. I was making intentional choices. Like um, I chose to home birth my children. Um, I chose to homeschool my children. I chose to um, participate in religions and explore them and then and then set them down when they weren't a good fit. I chose to explore different philosophies. So I had been doing things in that vein of exploring who I am, what's a what fit, and where I wanted to stretch. And then there came you. <laughs> um, I've known you my whole life. And when I say that, people are like, your whole life? Yes. Yeah, so for those time. of you who are just catching up now, um, I literally have known him since basically in utero, um, <laughs> because Maybe a little after that, I don't know. I mean, my mom and you would have been at picnics together. So <laughs> we, were, we just, were in the same room we before you were born. Room. It's true. Right. That I think. Okay. I see is, what you're saying. The reason it matters to me is I've known you this whole time. Yep. And then there was a day 33 years later when you and I had a, it's like a uh, Tinder caught, yep. <laughs> right? And the two of us all of a sudden saw each other as someone who we wanted to be really close to. We wanted to get to know in a new way. And there's a really, I mean, there's a whole memoir in there, which I've been told many times. But the thing that's important right here is when I wanted to have a deepening of my friendship with you, and I was feeling all sorts of intimacy, all sorts of closeness to you. That did not go over well in the life I had created for myself. And yeah, it didn't go over well with the man I was married to at the time, but that's actually less my concern that right in this moment than the fact that it actually did not go over well for anyone who I was around right. except you and your then wife. 
who were very accepting and, and calm about the whole thing because you'd already explored non-monogamy. You're on your own. When I made the decision to move toward you in friendship and in intimacy um, long before you and I had sex, many, many, long, many months. Long time. Um, when I made that decision to say, no, I, I feel like there's something in this person that my soul is longing to explore. I want to be closer friends with this person. I want to know them. The world had a lot to say about that. It, the world we were in. All from, from so many different directions, surprising directions, directions that you wouldn't think were necessarily connected to whether you and I had an intimate relationship, whether physical or not. Um, but it, but it did. It, it had a wide ranging impact on the world that we lived in. Yeah. I lost many friends. I had to reinvent my work life. Um, I, there were so many things and I don't think that that is coincidental. I think what I have learned all throughout my work. So I work now as, as a coach, helping people who are transitioning their relationships, they're reinventing their relationships. And what I've seen over and over again is when non-monogamy in whatever form, however you want to design that, when that is on the table, people's individuation opportunities are now very present. Oh, yes. It doesn't mean that they yeah. have to choose that. Some people, in fact, do not choose to engage in their individuation work. And they actually try to start being a perfect poly person. Or they try, they try to fit into the model of what they think a non-monogamous person should be. And that's not an that's individuation. Not, those aren't individuation actions. Those are just another way of, of trying to fit an externally defined mold. Yeah. But when the people I work with, um, when they see that opportunity in front of them and they elect to see this often challenging experience as soul work as um as the work of growing up of growing into themselves when they see that the shifts that they have to make the shifts where we we work with jealousy we deal with what it is to negotiate for um seemingly incompatible needs in our relationships or to figure out how the hell to manage a calendar with more than one other important person in your life uh -huh. um when you do that all of a sudden all of those hard things, all that clunky work, it, it's now meaningful. And that's why for me, non-monogamy and individuation are a perfect fit. Because if you choose to, you can explore non-monogamy as an individuation opportunity. Right. And both of them uh, are meaning-making activities. Yes. The individuation is your own personal meaning, making meaning of your own personal self. And then the whatever level of conscious monogamy, non-monogamy, whatever, but the consciousness of it is what brings the meaning out of it Yes, because it's yours, because you were the one who designed it, thought about it, decided what was important and what wasn't. All of a sudden, all of these things, the, the meaning just shoots through the roof. That's my experience. Right. And humans are by nature, meaning-making creatures. We are storytelling creatures and we are meaning-making creatures because really storytelling yeah, is just meaning-making. Same thing. <laughs> right? yeah. um, and this is another piece of our early relating. So in some ways, just reflecting on this and, and feeling into why, why is it that we're saying playing with fire? Why are we talking about non-monogamy and individuation? Why is this the direction we've gone? I think this is the stuff we spent those early months and years. Yes trying to figure out yep. we came into each other's lives and we would talk about what it meant to truly become oneself. We would talk though also yeah. about what it meant to be a human. Why? Like what is special about being a human? Exactly. Lots of philosophical conversations and existential conversations. Yeah. And you mentioned that, uh, that my previous wife and I had already messed around with, uh, Nominogamy. Many, many years, of many, nominogamy. many years. And the difference was the conscious intention. So the things that we're talking about now, the individuation and the, the meaning making and the, the growth opportunities, 
we didn't pursue those because we just took action and we didn't pay a lot of attention to what it was what it did to our relationship. We didn't have those conversations of what does it mean to be having relationships like this? What does it mean that we're that we're doing something out of the ordinary? We never had those conversations. So the growth that was available there didn't didn't happen. And the meaning making that was available was left on the table. And then so when you and I started and we started having those conversations, the 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 world got a lot more colors in it than it had because it was very simple and black and white before that. And then it became all nuanced and amazing. And messy and as messy. fuck. But the mess, like <laughs> colors are messy. Black and white, simple. Plus, if you it's play neat. with Play-Doh and you have multiple and colors, you start, though, oh, pretty it gets soon so it just messy. gets really messy. And but you can make some pretty stuff. And you make a pretty nice, um, very interesting, like, uh, conglomeration of yes. things yeah. before you make the mess. <laughs> no, I say messy because I mean, I believe that messy isn't a bad thing. I'm messy in the kitchen. I'm messy when I make art. I am messy when I have sex. I'm I'm messy, and I'm also orderly. Yeah, it. You don't have to choose one or the other. My decision to keep my office in an incredibly um, carefully arranged, thoughtfully arranged. My books are even arranged by color order as well as by topic. Um, that doesn't impact the fact that I am totally down for getting messy in my friendships, for really wrestling through nuanced problems and troubles. We we can be both. We are paradoxical, and that's great. And I think that's one of the things I love about non-monogamy is it lets you stay, if you choose, to do it consciously, which yeah. I appreciate you so much saying there is a difference because you can do this unconsciously too. You can, you can do default non-monogamy too. We don't talk about it much, but you can just try to fit into some other person's version of what non-monogamy should be. You could listen to a teacher or you could read a book or whatever and try to like check off the list. None of that's going to get you the individuation. It won't get you the best, the most you, you, you could be the most you like relationship you could have. Only you can do that. And it also, while it seems to keep you out of the mess, in my experience, working with a lot of people at this point, um, it doesn't actually keep you out of the mess. It actually invites you into someone else's mess. Right. Because you, the things, when you hear my stories, remember, they're my stories. I'm not asking you to model yourself after my relationship. Ken and I are sharing this particular story because it's one example of what can happen. And it's this particular story because it's you and me in it. Yeah. And so we can be messy by being too rigid too, by trying to mm -hmm. go and, and actualize something in the, the right way. Great big air quotes around that right way. Yeah. And anybody who's been in a monog monogamous relationship for very long knows that there's plenty of mess in there, but a lot of that can be hidden by the cultural container that we're given of for monogamy. It's like a junk drawer, but you just close it. Monogamy is like, you just, we just close that and that can stay there, but we all know it's in there. So if you, and there's some important stuff in there, what might be but in it's there? a mess in in my monogamy, I can say something that was yeah, in the junk what drawer. what was in your junk drawer? Um, all of my spirituality was in the junk drawer. Mm -hmm. All of it. Because um, my first uh, husband was just not available for that conversation. And I would bring it out and do some stuff with it. And I would talk about it. And then I would bring it home. And it wasn't so much that it wasn't welcome. It was just, it would just thud to the floor. And so I would pick up the pieces of my spiritual self uh -huh. and I would shove them into the, the background. So like every year I would have some new awakening and some new piece of me that I wanted to bring forward in that soulful spiritual realm. And then not because he was asking me to, let's be really clear. He was not asking me to put it in the junk drawer. It just didn't seem to fit anywhere. And we didn't have complicated conversations about these things. Yeah. And because we were monogamous, I didn't feel like I could go on a spiritual exploration with someone else, especially because the spiritual explorations I was talking about involved feelings and emotions and intimacy. So 
I put them, yep. I put yep. them in that box and I put them in that drawer and I was like, yep, I guess that's just, yeah, we just won't talk about that. Right. And for a lot of my, um, my previous relationship, I put my wants, my desires in that drawer, not the whole time, not, a, but for long periods of time. And that was me. I put them in that drawer because I thought I was supposed to. Which is funny because you were non-monogamous. Right. Because it was default. It was like, like you, at one point there was a, there was a checkbox checked off that said, yep, we are non-monogamous, but then you never talked about it. Yeah. So you found yourself in the same place. Yep. All the stuff we can't talk about. What are you doing? What are you thinking about when you can't think about what you actually want to think about? (laughs) <laughs> okay, we'll let that one okay, that's too much. <laughs> just that's too much. float out there. But my my point there was that the uh yeah, the drawer, the junk drawer, it's not a it's not a monogamy junk drawer. It's just a junk drawer. It you put stuff in there in whatever relationship you're in. And the question is, do you leave it closed or do you open it and try to figure out what you're gonna do with what's in there? And I I've really appreciated having these conversations with you. Um they're they're public facing yeah and one of the things we're going to do is we're going to keep having these public facing conversations we're going to show up week after week and do this but um one of the things that happens when we do this is we have to show up messy our life is messy right now we are currently oh, yes messy. at the tail end of a home renovation project that has left us living in a tent all summer um trying to manage the expectations of a lot of children please oh please let it be the tail end (laughs) it's been a lot so and that is all a lot we have a lot of privilege to get to do those things and to experience this and it's been really hard and so we've been bickering and fighting and it's been challenging and yep and at the same time we're learning and growing together and one of the commitments i have for this for this season seven and this reinvention is um, to play with fire even more boldly yes. in the recorded zone. Yeah. Um, and go ahead and have the messy conversations with you on camera and try not to perfect myself into a corner. Yeah. Because I, I do come here, I show up here to these conversations as uh, quote unquote, the expert. I have a doctorate in depth psychology. I have a certificate of sexuality education. Um, I have many years of studying, not just relationships, but, but uh, many other things that are relationship adjacent. And I apply those in my work, but I'm also just a person who still doesn't always know how to drag herself out of bed and who before recording this very episode needed to go ask my partner to co-regulate with me and wrap me all up and basically let me hibernate for a half an hour because I couldn't face the idea of getting on camera. So this is, this is our, this is our stuff. Like, she, like she said, like you said, just going to do this public facing thing. so that, um, and my goal is so that people know that uh, relationships are a lot more interesting than just what we see on social media on uh the you know instagram pictures and and such yeah there's like the surface level there's the surface level of of your relationship and mm-hmm. then there are the deeper deeper layers and many of us have we have an inkling that there is something more something more that we could get but we're not always sure what the more is let alone how what to get the it. more is right we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. We we've talked about recording one of our fights. We'll do it. We haven't done it yet. We'll do it. Partially because in in the fight, the fight is kind of the focus and we're not <laughs> thinking that at the meta level of hmm people would probably want to listen to this. <laughs> it's true, but but one of these days. Well, it's going to happen and I'm well, actually looking forward to it because I am too. And it might happen in the middle of one of these recordings. We'll just start having a fight about something. (laughs) Let's see how that goes. The thing is learning to fight. Well, Mm. it's been really hard for me. I was raised to, I was, I was a born fighter. Like I, I was, I was, I was, uh, raised in a soup of aggression and, and argumentativeness. And I'm a youngest child. So I'm running around trying to appease everybody all the time. It's a really interesting dynamic. Yeah. So learning how to fight well. 
yeah. for each of us have been yeah, hard won skills. Yep. So we'll figure that out too. Some of the other things we're going to talk about this season are um, what is it, what exactly it would look like to commit to an individuation journey um, and like where that could happen. It doesn't have to just be in your primary, you know, like most important romantic relationship. If you have one, it doesn't have to just be amongst your many uh, open relationships. It doesn't, ha- it could be amongst your friendships. It could be with your, with your children, with your parents, like individuation relationship is about really owning uh, who you are and how you're showing up. So it's not going to be just about the one place. No. We're also going to talk about some of the more um, sticky wickets that I've been seeing <laughs> around the internet. Uh, it's time for me to talk about polarity and this. Con- oh, yes. This constant. Uh, uh, overgeneralization into the masculine and feminine and a complete misunderstanding of of like what polarity is for so there's and a conversation yeah, there's a conversation, multiple conversation, conversations uh, to have about that systems and how we Ooh, regulate yeah, them we've been learning about that deep in the midst of certifying as with um neurosomatic intelligence and so lots of stuff about how we're regulating our nervous system, how we're managing our More technology, by the way. Yes. Managing our complicated lives yep. through brilliant technology. Yeah. Um, and then what to do when stuff doesn't work, what to do when intimacy isn't um, going the way you want, uh, what to do when we're dealing with rejection sensitivity, um, how to envision a non-monogamy and then go experiment with it, figure out what you might want. Yeah. There's so we've got a lot on on our plate here we have a lot and some of it you know would have would have fit into project relationship as it was but we're focusing on with with playing with fire we're moving into a more targeted and um, also a little edgier and edgier so yeah so if you're out there listening right now and you're like oh finally this is great because I've I've been wanting to hear. I've heard so many people say I want more of the individuation material. I want what I want to hear that. If you've got questions, now is the time to bring them. Now is when. Let's hear them. So you can always email us. Um, right now, the best place to email is actually Ken at JolieHamilton.com. Um, he'll field those questions and make sure that we answer them for you. So, well, well, here so we are. welcome to playing with fire.